I like frogs. I think every reasonable sane person does also. I've been keeping hurt tiles, that's the collective term for reptiles and amphibians before you ask, not an STI, for the last 20 years. But recently, I was introduced to keeping European species outdoors in Britain by Celtic Reptile Amphibians, which is run by Harvey Tweets and Tom Whitehurst. There are many advantages to keeping reptiles outdoors. More space is available to them, natural food entering the enclosure, and one of the main benefits is natural UV. I'd recommend European species mostly for keeping outdoors in Britain, as they're best suited to our unpredictable weather. The first thing to do is pick an area that gets plenty of sun for basking, and enough room to build. The great thing with doing this is the amount of space I can use to keep my pets happy. Other benefits include a clean flow of air, seasonal cycles, and not having to clear up frog and lizard turds, which naturally dissipate into the soils once completed. With the help of Harvey and Tom from Celtic, the real experts at this, we're going to build three enclosures, one for midwife toads, which are more terrestrial, one for yellow-bellied toads, which prefer more water, and one for the European pond turtle. Midwife toads don't really go in the water much, so their enclosure is going to be 50% land and 50% water, which gives me the option to add other species in with them if I choose. The yellow-bellied toads will be on the far left, in a more 60-40 split, as they spend quite a bit of time in the water. While on the right, the European pond turtle will have a 70-30 split to water, as it will bask on the side, but spends a lot of its time in the water. All three species live happily in Britain, and in fact can be found in some feral populations. We start by measuring and cutting the sleepers. I've used treated sleepers from a timber yard as we're going to be putting a liner over this so no chemicals will affect the animals or the water. Once the area has been decided, in this case around 1.8 meters by 1 meter, we then need to level the ground so the sleepers are straight and also dig into the ground to put the ponds in each enclosure and hibernaculums. Having a deep hole in the middle means the water will drain down to this area. If you have a lot of rodents, then it may be a better idea to use slabs or even concrete to stop them burrowing in and eating your pets. However, the cats in my neighbourhood have largely seen to this problem the only good thing the fuckers have done. Once the hole's dug, it's time to put the liner in. Rather than just using expensive pond liner, we've used roofing liner, which is much cheaper and does the same job. This will stop your hurt tiles digging out the enclosure and making sure you put some holes in at the lowest point will ensure good drainage. We hammer in the sides of the liner after roughly settling it in. After this, we put another bit of liner on top to form the mini ponds in each enclosure, allowing enough room for the land area also. Rainwater is always best to fill these, but seeing as the animals won't be going in for a few weeks, tap water will be fine. Now we've added some of the soil we dug out earlier and started putting plants in. It's much easier to do this now before the frame goes on. I've put some rocks into the ponds also for the animals to hide around, bask on and as a feature, along with some sand on the bottom of the pond and some sand into the soil. For plants there's quite a bit of choice and Celtic have actually done a video on which are suitable so I'll add a link to that in the description but I'd suggest flowering plants to attract insects, which your animals can then feed on, and plants that have plenty of cover for them to hide in. And it's good to have plants in the water, like iris and pond weeds. I try to keep plants native if possible, but it's down to personal preference. Once that's done, it's time to add the frame, which stops the critters getting out and acts as a sun trap, perfect for cold-blooded animals. These are polycarbonate sheets that you can use for a greenhouse, all three enclosures are separate, so animals can't mix. The frame is screwed into the sleepers to keep it in place. I like to create a bit of a biome, so as well as the plants, I put plenty of insects and worms to each enclosure, as it means there's plenty of natural food when they go in, but also start cleaning up the soil in there and breeding to create a supply of natural food, which means I only need to do very minimal feeds. For some finishing touches, I've trimmed a lot of the excess liner and added some logs, rocks and tree bark. Because the sides are high, my animals are unlikely to escape, 
But bear in mind, depending on what species you keep, some can be escape artists, so some kind of top may be necessary. I've had to add a pond net to the top of mine to stop birds and cats getting in, though again, this may vary depending where you live. After a month or so, it was time to release the animals into the enclosures, which was great to see them come into fruition. During the winter, I had a healthy dose of dead leaves for my herptiles to hibernate underneath. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this has shown you it's relatively easy to set up these kind of enclosures and it can be great to see the animal outside enjoying the sunshine and again plenty of space. Do check out Celtic Reptile Amphibians, they're well worth subscribing and it's a great channel with way more information on this subject than I have. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can check out some of my other videos on screen here and there are new uploads every Monday and Thursday. Also, why not check out my wildlife podcast, The Bearded Tits Podcast, where I interview wildlife TV presenters, artists, cameramen, and scientists each week. Until next time, cheers.